Hello everybody and welcome to the FM Scout YouTube channel. So in today's video we're going to look at a tactic from a different creator other than me. And um, we're going to look at a tactic, we're going to sort of break it down, how it tested as you can see here, did pretty well with Inter Milan. I'm going to give you a brief breakdown of not just how it did, which is what we do a lot in these videos, but then also some analysis on like how it plays in the match engine. There's always a lot of different tactics that you can go and download. And I think sometimes people want to know what the real life comparison might be, right, from a team historically in football. So we're going to look at the results of it, look at the way that it plays, give you some highlights and give you a real life comparison. And let's get into it. So in terms of the actual save, I went on holiday for the entire season, left everything to the assistant, including picking the players, which can always make things a lot worse, I think, for results. But here's the tactic anyway. It is the it is the FM22 Paris Nat Paris Liverpool, short version Liverpool, 4 2 3 1, kind of striker and third winger. Basically, just, just the information here is what game it is it's used in, and a couple of, I think, maybe other creators that helped him, and what team he used, and a few other diff different things that are in here. So it's a 4-2-3-1, but one of the two pivots is quite an advanced player being in Mazala support, so quite interesting to see how that plays, looking at the, the game we'll look at in a second. And just looking at this quickly, what I'd expect to see is these two go narrow uh, when we get the ball into the final third, and if it gets too congested, then the wing-backs overlap if they get a chance to... Uh, but it looks like it could be quite direct and counter-attacking based on the fact that everybody's on attack duty here. But we'll see how it plays out in the game. I have looked at a few of the different games just throughout the season, some random ones, to get a, a brief idea. In possession, instructions look like this. So we've got higher tempo, slightly shorter passing with an attacking mentality, working it into the box, run at defence, overlaps, and no change on the width there. Transition, counter, counter press, throw it long to the fullbacks. Out of possession's basically an all-out press, except for the defensive line is higher, not much higher. These are the set pieces, I'm not going to spend too long talking about them, but if you play on Xbox or if you play and you don't like to download things, then here's the main, the main one is the attacking corners, that's the one that I think that has the biggest impact on this, so those are the, the corners for you, and they're aimed at the near post. So the league table then, to results, let's have a look at this. So we've got 96 points, 30 wins, 6 draws, 2 losses with Inter Milan, 110 goals scored, which is by far the most, and 23 goals against, which is also by far the least. So you've got, you've got the next nearest team only on 74 for goals scored, and the next nearest team only had 29 for against. So, so a pretty solid season in terms of points and goals scored and goals against. Average possession was only 16th. It's not a possession-based tactic. Expected goals for was 97.31, which is a lot more than the next nearest team. So it's a very, very good tactic for creating chances as you can see not just with this but if we have a look at if we have a look at clear cut chances created 140 is the next nearest team we had 183 so it definitely is a tactic that creates a lot of not just chances but good chances good chances that should give you a good opportunity to score a lot of goals like expected goals against was only 20 that's a pretty good tactic to have those statistics in in a season uh, for and against we didn't concede a single penalty and even like total shots against you've got to think that only having 217 shots against when we don't even keep the ball that much. That's a pretty interesting set of statistics right there because normally when you have a lot of shots, or sorry, a lack of shots against, that normally means that you've kept the ball a lot and you're a team that dominate the ball as a top side and you, you create your own chances and you stop them creating theirs. So to not have the ball that much and only have that many shots against you is a pretty good, again, indicator that this tactic's going to be pretty solid, I think, for the most part if you're a top side. So in terms of other results, we saw that we managed to win the league which was fantastic. We also got to the semi-final of the Champions League and we won the Italian Cup, the Coppa Italia Fanta Final. And within this Cup Final, there were some really weird decisions made by the system manager for who he played, so we'll have a look at this. So this was the team for the final, how it started at least. You had Arturo Vidal selected to play right wing. So I don't know how he came to the conclusion that Arturo Vidal was going to be the inverted winger on attack duty, but apparently he did. He didn't stay there for too long. I don't know when he came off in the game, but he doesn't stay there. The match stats were as follows. So you can see here that AC Milan completed a lot of passes against us. They created one clear cut chance, one half chance. We created two clear cut chances, four half chances. So much better chances created for us, much better expected goals. They only had five shots. I managed to still get expected goals pretty high. And there was no penalty, so those are decent opportunities they managed to create. So this first highlight is going to be quite early on here. AC Milan are going to play out, and then they're going to just ping it long into Zlatan. We're going to win the ball here. And this is like an early part, maybe not so much that, but in a second when it comes back a second time, we can start to see one of my comparisons come out. I'll, I'll tell you in a second what that is. But just looking at here, you can see that we have players narrow. The wide players actually start off in those sort of narrow, um, more central zones. And then you have the full backs that are occupying and holding the width and exploiting the width in the, in the final third, maybe the middle third a little bit as well. So you can see that early that if possession is built up, if it is... You can see that the wing backs are going to be there to hold your width. The wingers are not just going to move inside with the ball, but they're actually going to start in a more central position as well, which is interesting to see. 
Okay, this is interesting. So even though we've seen that we basically got a full lock press on, you can see here that when they play the ball back here, that it doesn't seem that way really. Like you'd expect players to be instantly on there. Really, they sort of let the centre-back sort of play it between them. The striker, for some reason, is back here marking. I'm not really sure what he's doing with the settings that he's got. Unless he's got man mark, I don't think he does though. People are going to look at the out-of-possession settings and they're going to think this is like just some um, all-out pressing tactic. And it is in what it's been set as but if you just watch here watch Lotaro martinez here for a second so they throw the ball in and we've got their players marked up here so they can't go back we're forcing them forwards into an area that we should have you know more numbers and be able to win the ball even though they've got two spare players right there which i think is pretty poor i would expect this player to be here and you probably pull the striker over to go and occupy this is what you would expect the striker to do that in real life is what i would expect if you're gonna if you're gonna try and stop the team playing out there you would definitely have him come make the numbers up come make the numbers at least even without including the the taker and have the striker come and play at the very least like in half and half row where you're able to affect that player that goes to him but you're also stopping this but and then you can even pull the opposite winger in but they don't they just let them play out so they get out of it and you could say that's to do with the defensive settings on the set pieces but then let's watch this here so latara martinez now at this point has dropped way off all the way into the midfield to, for the pressing which i don't really understand why with the settings that he's got and then we watch them play out nobody gets pressure They're, these two switch positions again and they're pressing Milan get out, and the lack of pressing on the middle part of the pitch is actually going to make us concede the goal eventually. Because I think, like, again, they just they get the easy balls back. I'm not really sure what's going on here. We try to make a challenge. The tight marking and aggressive tackling probably costs us there. They get through and they score. So you can see how you can see why some tactics creators feel it's necessary to have the full lock press on because that sometimes happens even when it when it shouldn't. So in this clip here, similar have the ball. They're going to play it around the back, and eventually they're going to try and force it to somebody because we've got a lot of pressure on the ball we're forcing to a mistake we win the ball here and now what's interesting here is it going to one of my first comparisons here is i'd say this tactic reminds me a lot in possession and in transition of real madrid under especially Jose Mourinho. if you ever have the time i would highly recommend to go and watch Javi alonso's tactical breakdown of his madrid team on coach's voice he speaks about how they were without saying direct he says that they were very focused on transitions especially offensive transitions and being quick in transitions exploiting the space so you can see here we just go back even 10 seconds um as soon as we win it it's not just about counter-attacking but it's about where the players move as well as soon as we win it we get here so we we need like we need to have a target first of all central to hit so somebody has to be up there and instantly you've got players just looking to break through the spaces and if that isn't arturo vidal if that's an actual wide player who should be there like if you've got an actual wide player you're gonna see how we probably could that would be like a run in if that was Mane, for example or salah that first touch is probably gonna be with well, the ball would be a bit closer i think here the first touch is towards goal and that's a shooting opportunity okay this is straight after a kickoff but this situation happens a lot we'll see it again i think later on in the game where the tactic is very good at creating multiple passing options and the team that you play against, if the AI are clever, they'll have to really work hard to prevent all the options because you've got two wide players, a striker, a 10, and the Mazala likes to go and get into awkward areas to get on the ball. So what teams tend to do, they end up being a bit more defensive than they would normally be against you. So we see that here. As soon as we start to move around, we get our players in a few spaces and you can see here that like the Mazala is just in this awkward position for this player here and, and he knows... The Mazzara is like an awkward position here and he could easily pull up into a gap here. He could pull wide, allow this player to go further up. He could do a lot of different things here. And what tends to happen a lot is your midfielders and your options all pin the midfielders and defenders back. And then it just creates a line for your central defenders to run through. So if you've got really good players that are on the ball and they like to travel with it, they're going to break through. And if we had like, if you have like a new gen centre back who's got like 17 acceleration, 18 pace and a bit of dribbling, they're going to be so dominant in this tactic because the rest of the tactic creates so many good passing angles and options that it just allows the team to drop off and then you've got central defenders that can just go straight through those lines of press without having to play through they can just travel through so AC Milan start off on the ball here we're going to press them they paint a dangerous area we're going to win it off them at some point I think we will I'm pretty sure this is the goal actually it's about the same time I think the goal I saw before the game they play it through eventually we're going to win this yeah this is the goal pretty sure it is the right wing gets on to it straight away we're in, we're in behind we've got options in behind Alexis finds a great ball through to Latara Martinez and hits the Pyrus, but Perisic is there to score. And again, inverted wingers making sure that the closer you get to the goal, the narrower they're going to be. So your width is not going to be occupied by the wide players. It's more than likely going to be occupied by the wing backs. But if they're not up with the play, so if you win it on a counter-attack or something like that, you're going to be quite a direct team because of the lack of width with the wingers. One thing I really like is when the playmaker, the number 10, is on the side of the winger, it creates a lovely bit of combination play. So we're going to win the ball here in a second from AC Milan. We're actually defending right now, so they are quite wide. But when we finally win this... You're going to see our number 10 
well, not not Martinez, the actual number 10, but our attacking midfielder who's Sensi right now, because he's like in the ha left half space where the inverted winger would normally look to go into in this situation. And this is something I think is improved with this year's match engine is the players are a lot more intelligent. So he recognizes that this player's here. I mean, he could, like that ball probably could go through there and he could be through on goal, but he's going to occupy a wide area now because the number 10 isn't really central. He's actually lopsided over to the half space on this side. And then the Mazala is almost playing like, it's almost like a 4-3-3 now, right? You've got the back four, a pivot player, and the other pivot player is almost playing like another number eight uh, with a, with now the number 10. So it's looking like a slightly different shape right now. But as it comes back in here, now since he's got onto it uh, as the number 10 in the half space, and now what you see here is this player now playing like a proper winger, not just like an inverted player. And by him occupying the outside player so much, it's just created a massive disjointed line and defensive shape from AC Milan who have been done on the counter. Again, quick transitions we spoke about, we get through, and unfortunately if Sensi was a better player and a better number 10, we could have got through and scored, but he got caught and got his, uh, his shot blocked. And even here, we win it straight back with Damian, Bridge gets it, and then he just travels with it. You know, he's got the space, and I'd, I'd like that. And I really like that. And I think the Mazala, because if you look how wide he is, because he pours so wide, I think it opens this gap, and often it's the right centre-back that seems to be travelling with it, and he pours out the way, and he exploits it. But here, the bridge, left centre-back comes across, travels with it up to an area, and then plays the ball, which is perfectly into Alexis, who then gets on the ball. And you can see straight away it goes narrow, and he's looking for his narrow winger coming in the side. Is Perisic going to get to this? He does... Brozovic, and now he's going to go narrow, and here, I think that if they were to look to build on it a little more, that this player would go would go and overlap. If you wanted to see a bit more possession from this tactic, the only thing I would suggest is to change this player. Because Barella, who's now playing as the as the Mazala here, if he was a different role, like a deep line playmaker or something like that, he might be back here, and there might be a case of retaining out and going wide to wing back, and then maybe crossing in. And it might just create some different angles and different types of chances to create, and I think you could create a number of different opportunities just from changing that one role and you might be slightly better defensively as well but you might lose the overloads that you create as Perisic hits it way over i think we'll finish on a goal so brozovic is going to win the ball here for us we're going to counter attack you can see he's breaking straight through you can see the winger is still staying quite narrow not really interested in going too wide is what i was saying about they're going to stay quite narrow and be very um, direct on the counter attack and in transitions that's your opportunity to break through and create overloads um, especially on the back four and narrow plays into Laris Martinez, back to Brozovic, Perisic. So, Barella's the Mazzara, right? So, what I just said about changing the wrong, creating different kinds of attack, the one positive you get is in these scenarios, he's really going to break forwards on the counter attack, breaks through the half space really well. Let's even just go back 10 seconds and watch him again. So, he's here. He's going to keep going as a Mazzala. He's not interested in holding and being an option. He's going to then look to go, gets through the half space. And a combination of the winger holding the width a little bit, him getting through there was really good on the counter attack. And what a brilliant counter attacking goal that was. It was brilliant to see, great bit of movement and a nice combination of the roles that we've got there. Now, I'm not saying it's a recreation that's very different because it's not, and that never intended it to be a recreation. But my comparison to real life, if I had to put like a real life team that it reminded me of a little bit, it would be Real Madrid under Jose Mourinho. They like a 4 2 one kind of shape. Um, they'd be very, they'd be very quick on transitions, especially transition out of position to in, to exploit in the space. So if they've got a back four that's quite spread, looking to get four backs high and wide, having players that exploit those spaces in between the gaps, whether it was Ozil, Ronaldo, a wide player like Di Maria, somebody like that. I would say expect to destroy teams on the counter attack really well. If you're struggling to get a goal on a game, I think a very easy solution to this would be to change these to like a complete one back attack or something like that. So that when these two go narrow, you can then have somebody on the overlaps a bit more, a bit quicker. So something like that I think would work would work decently well. Maybe change one of these two to a support duty, but that would generally be something I would recommend if you need to get a goal. Defensively, you can always pull these two back into the midfield slots here next to these two here, make it like a 4 for one one But generally for this tactic, what I think it does a good job of is in the match engine, as you can see, it can create a lot of different kind of opportunities because of the combination of the wingers. If the, if the shadow strikers on their side, they stay slightly wider, you can create some good combinations out of that. If he's not, they might come in central, then you've got potentially the wing back to come over and overlap there, or you might have the Mazala to go over there. It creates a, a good enough number of problems where you could probably not have to do too much and win, which I think is what a lot of people like to do with downloaded tactics. And that's why we like to cover these as well on the channel. You know, everybody plays Foot Manager differently, and if you are somebody who wants to download tactics and you just want something that looks sort of normal to you, and that has like a real life comparison. I would say something like Jose Mourinho's Real Madrid 2012, 2013 Real Madrid 2, something like that would be my real life comparison. Obviously it's not perfect and out of possession, you know, you would not expect that to be a Jose Mourinho out of possession set of instructions, but you could see in the match engine, it doesn't really defend like that. And that isn't my comparison anyway. My comparison is the way that they deal with the ball in possession, the way the combination of the movements of the players and the transition, I'd say that's what it looks more like and out of possession, it just, at the moment, it just seems to defend a bit of a weird way, but there we are. 
So my out of possession comparison would be something like Jurgen Klopp's Borussia Dortmund team in his last year or two before he uh, before he left. I'd say that's more like a comparison for out of possession. In possession, it reminds me a lot of Real Madrid with Alonso and Kadira. Kadira wouldn't exactly be a Mazala, but you get the idea. Like he plays quite a lot like a pivot, especially in the building phase. Right, you can see playing out from the back because he, there isn't a pivot here. He still plays as part of the two man midfield, and then he builds up into an advanced position later on. But yeah, that's gonna do it. That's my sort of tactic test with Nap's tactic in his four two three one. And that's my sort of quick breakdown of how it plays in the match engine. A real-life comparison loosely. It's always going to be loosely because he doesn't design it to be recreation. So it's, I'm not saying this is exactly like Real Madrid of 2012 and 2013. It's just a loose comparison with the combination of the roles, the way it plays and that kind of stuff. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.